Hi, this is Mrs King. We're going to be doing something slightly different this week. We're going to be combining maths with art. We're going to make some Celtic knot work. I'm going to show you some examples of where you may have seen Celtic knot work. And as I scan through these, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what you need. So firstly, in order to produce the knot work, you're going to need some spotty paper. You're also going to need a pencil, a ruler and a rubber. And with regards to the spotty paper, I'll have attached it to your homework on Go for Schools. However, if you do not have access to a printer, don't worry, you can just use your maths books. So here's some examples of Celtic knot work. What I'd like you to do when you've finished is to take a picture of what you create and email it over to me. I'd like to make a collage of all your work. OK, so step one. So you've got some different options of the resources that you follow in order to make the knot work. This video is going to work through a PowerPoint that I will also send you. So you can either work through the video, pausing it as you go, or you can use the PowerPoint and work through at your own pace. Alternatively, there's also a handout, a student handout with the instructions on. So it's up to you, whichever you find easier. On this video, I'm also going to be using the visualizer so that you can see how I construct it. So step one is draw a grid. Make sure the sides are of an even number of squares. For example, this PowerPoint is using 6 by 10. On my example, I'm going to use a 6 by 8. Completely up to you what size grid that you use. So step two is faintly mark in a border one square in from the edge. So swapping to my visualizer, I'm going to now do the step two. So faintly, I'm going to be marking in a border from the edge. I only want to try and construct these lines quite, lines quite faintly as afterwards I'm going to be rubbing out any lines that I don't need. Step three is place extra dots in between the border dots, as you can see here. So I'm going to start at the top and fill in some extra dots. So these go on the front border that I made, and they go in between the existing dots. I've just complete, completed all the dots, and it would look like this. Step four is now to lightly pencil diagonal grid using the dots as a guide. So these are the new dots that you've just created. I'm going to do this. Your grid should now look like this. Next step is to now lightly draw in four arched corners and next the curved edges. I'm going to start with the corners. I'm just going to lightly sketch in my edges. Pause the video and I'll do each of my edges now. Once I've got my four arched corners, I'm now going to draw my curved edges. As you can see, I'm drawing my curved edges, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll work my way around. Your knot work should now look like this. 
Step six is choose a starting ribbon and continue so that it goes alternatively over and under the other ribbons, rubbing out as you go. Now step six I think is probably the most tricky step and takes a little bit of concentration. So if I want to start on the screen with this top corner, you can see I move along and I'm going under a ribbon. So I just go under the ribbon and then I'm moving over the next ribbon, then under this ribbon and over the next and finally under the ribbon and round. Because I went under the last, I go over the next. So this does take a little bit of concentration. For my knot work, I'm going to start in this top corner and I'm going to work my way down. I'm going to go over this first ribbon. This is my first ribbon that I'm going over. And therefore, I'm going to go under this ribbon. So what I'm going to do is, as I work my way down, I'm going to rub out as I go. So I'm going under my first ribbon where I'm rubbing out these two lines. Darkening up to show. So I've started, I've met my first ribbon and I have gone over, and I've met my next ribbon and I'm going under, which is why I've created the solid line here. The next one I'm going over, so I can continue down in a dark line. And pass over this ribbon here. Gone over one, now I need to go under. Thicken this line and strengthen this line. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to carry on. Okay, so, halfway through, I'm just showing you what I've got at the moment. Started at my top corner, I've moved over, under, over, under over and under, over, under, over. As I've been going, I've been rubbing out my lines as I go. So I'm going to now finish this grid. And I'm just finishing off my last ribbon. So I'm going over and then I'm going to go under. Step seven is continue until you join up where you've started. Then choose another starting ribbon if necessary. Finally, rub out all unnecessary lines. Step eight is decide which crossings to rub out, then redraw the line so they, that the ribbon curves back on itself rather than along the flat. For example, we can rub out the inner crossing or the outer crossing. I'll show you how I've done this. On my knot work, I have rubbed out this crossing here. And instead of it continuing on, it now continues back on itself. I could also do it on outer crossing. For instance, if I were to choose this part here, this crossing here, I could curve it back on itself. There's some examples of how you can do this. Finally, next step, make sure all your lines are rubbed out that you do not want and then colour in. See how creative you can get. Here's some examples of some Celtic knot work that have been produced. Here are some pictures of the first example that I tried. I followed the same size grid as per the PowerPoint presentation. 
So this is what a 6 by 10 would look like. I shaped in the dark, the background is dark. And then finally, I just done a green flat. I'd love to see how creative you can get. I'm sure yours will look much better, much more professional than mine. Please do email me the pictures when you're done. I hope you enjoyed doing something a little different this week. Take care.